Once upon a time there was the beautiful kingdom of Belmont. It had a taste of glory in an old past, but as the years passed by, its powerful and vigorous king got sick, and year after year he became less and less capable of taking care of that much land. Slowly, the whole area became an abandoned and wild wheel. One could not see people, animals or any kind of life. One could not see anything, actually. Far, far away, and the other side of the world to be more precisely, there was an adventuress named Victoria. She lived in a cottage, was a good horse rider and an expert on typical markets. She also had some society obligations, which she didn't like but did them anyway. Victoria lived with two men. His name was Jack and he was a Scottish bon vivant. He liked the best on the easiest way. Together they made an interesting couple on their search of good and new experiences. Victoria was born in Belmondo, but hadn't heard of it since joining Voyaz and discovering new land. Until that day a messenger came and brought information about Belmondo's king. Victoria was the only conscious and living relative of his majesty and was chosen by the people to take her family responsibilities. She did not really know what to do, and as she realized she was already on her way to Belmondo. Jack went with her, of course, it was convenient and he in some way wished there was a chance of becoming a prince, or maybe the king. As soon as they got there, they noticed life could not be seen there for a long time. Victoria started to make small changes, with the idea of making Belmondo somewhere a bit livable. She could not even see, but in a short period she had started to take care not only of the king, but also of the castle and its surroundings. It became her new objective. Some might say it was God who chose it this way, Mother's destiny, but it was her life now, night and day. Victoria and Jack realized it wouldn't be an easy job, so they started to invite travelers who were passing nearby to help improving the kingdom's condition in exchange of food and accommodation. Some were woodworkers, other merchants, and even artists. Working together, they started to build and restore buildings and houses so that people could start to live there again. This exchange with the new cultures brought also a lot of improvements to the traditions of the kingdom. New products were cultivated and then commercialized and exchanged. New recipes were spread. You could see the different cultures mixing and bringing forward civilization. Even with all these improvements, changes will take time to give results. Jack, as his character indicated, was starting to lose patience and began more and more to be absent of his work until the day he decided Belmondo was not the right place for his required pleasures, and went away. Some legends still say he was transformed into a frog by a witch, and remains forever in Belmondo's lake. Victoria knew that things have to pass through a long path before becoming beautiful at the present. That's what she taught her people, to think of the future, not only to appreciate the present. People started to try to understand the nature that surrounded them. So, since nature never stops working, Gradually, they started to see beautiful results, like the pumpkin production. They had so many pumpkins that all the young girls started to wish that the fairy godmother transformed it in a carriage. Victoria had a different philosophy than the one of her time. She thought one of the best skills someone could have would be to be creative and manufacturing all kinds of things you might need. This means she stimulated her people to use whatever they had to get whatever they needed. This made from Belmondo a famous land for having wonderful artisans. Also recasting old structures and constructing new ones helped Belmondo's people to improve their building skills, among so many others. There was an old lady, for example, who became a worldwide known pastry cook. With time, other kingdoms started to comment on how this new queen, her people and the travelers they hosted were making changes on Belmondo. People went there to enjoy their products, their nature, it became even famous as a bird-watching point, since Victoria was against hunting. Victoria started to be called Queen Victoria by her people, even if she never really saw it by this perspective. After organizing a society basis, Queen Victoria felt it was time to give Belmondo some pleasures as well, so they transformed the old marsh in a nice and amusing lake. It did even have a beach. Also for enjoying summer, they built a cozy villa with wide windows. It came to a moment when the king, tired of his earthly sufferings, decided to abandon this world and went to find his spiritual kingdom. He knew that Belmondo was in good hands now. Though the people were very sad about their king's passage, they understood it as the natural cycle. The same way Queen Victoria made them understand about everything in nature, 
After all, this was what they were experiencing day by day in the last years, and they could only see them wrapping what they sewed. They were obviously so proud and so much happier now. Ciao Karen! Sei pronta a documentare tutti i nostri nuovi prodotti? Sì! Brava! Allora, quest'anno siamo riusciti a fare dell'ottimo sidro. Abbiamo fatto una produzione di sidro normale, sidro al malto e sidro al ginger. Tu hai provato il del buonissimo sidro naturale. Ci potresti dire cosa ne pensi? Buono, Poi... bellissimo! <ride> Abbiamo fatto della grappa, delle nostre susine, abbiamo fatto della grappa. Non ci siamo fermati qui, quest'anno veramente è stata un'annata eccezionale. Abbiamo fatto come al solito tutte le nostre marmellate e pomodori, abbiamo riserve per anni e anni e anni. Eccezionali. Sono qui, sono lì, sono lì, sono dappertutto. E non solo... Visto che è considerata l'annata particolarmente calda, siamo riusciti a fare anche mele secche e pomodori secchi. E poi, come hai visto, abbiamo appeso dei pomodori per avere pomodori freschi tutto l'anno. Now, our lovely Queen Victoria is going to join the most adventurous navigations on one of their discoveries. Together, they will be crossing with a sailboat the dangerous and surprisingly Atlantic Ocean their destination, the Caribbean islands. And who knows what can happen. <laughs>